Hello and welcome to today's program as part of MOLA's 2020 Dia de los Muertos Festival. I'm Gabriela Martinez, Director of Education, and on behalf of the Museum of Latin American Art in Long Beach, California, I'd like to thank you for joining us today as we learn more about the traditions around Dia de los Muertos. Before we begin, I'd like to thank the event sponsors that made it possible for us to offer this two-week event free of charge. Here is a brief welcome from our presenting sponsor, Hyundai. Welcome to the 2020 Day of the Dead virtual celebration presented by Hyundai. We are thrilled to be a sponsor for this great event. We hope that you enjoy the beautiful traditions that make this annual celebration so special. Have a great day. Additional support was provided by the Kenneth T. and Eileen L. Norris Foundation, Best J. Hodges Foundation, Arts Council for Long Beach, Robert Gumbiner Foundation, and the City of Long Beach. You also have the opportunity to participate in a virtual costume contest that we are organizing, and we'll drop that information in the chat later. So just upload your pictures of yourself in your Dia de los Muertos outfit to Instagram and tag us using the hashtags in the chat and uh, you'll be entered to win prizes. So today we will be participating in an Alebrijes painting workshop with artist Maria Guadalupe. As a woman born in Mexico and raised in the United States, Maria Guadalupe's work navigates multiple spaces, including migration, pilgrimage, gender roles and markers, the boundaries of class, as well as the in-between space created as a result of her hybrid culture. Through sculpture and print, she celebrates and critically engages the expectations of gender, culture, and identity. We are honored to have her here today, and we are sure you will really enjoy this wonderful workshop. Take it away. Hello, everybody. Like Gabriela said, my name is Maria Guadalupe. Thank you for joining us today. Um, Alevi Hits are so much fun, and I'm so excited to be here with you today. Uh, before we get started on actual painting, I want to make sure that we have all our materials set up. So let's go through this very quickly. And if you don't, I am going to be giving a little brief, um, uh, little background on Alebrijes, so you'll have some time to gather yourself. Okay, so first and foremost, you picked up a kit, and in the kit you received a figurine, um, an animal figurine. It could have been a turtle, raccoon, a zebra. I think we had owls and elephant and a lion or perhaps something else. Um, that is what we will be working on today. This is um, your uh, alebrije. And uh, you also received some paint in it came into these cute little plastic tubes. Um, I mean, yeah, just pop them open. And uh, sometimes I'm putting them in the plate so it's easier. If you are working with littles for my littles, it's probably better if you put it inside just so that if it spills, it spills on the, on the plate and not over on whatever your surface you're working on. And you also received a couple of brushes. Small brushes are best. Um, Alebrijes are known for their detail and pattern. And so it is nice to work with small brushes. You'll have a little more control. Optional, if you want to maybe draw out your um, uh, patterns first, it is good to just have a pencil. We're gonna be drawing lightly. So not pressing hard, just lightly so that we, you can mark it for yourself. And then, you know, make designs on it before you uh, commit with the paint. Um, and then lastly, make sure you have some paper towels and some water to clean off your brushes. Okay, so while you gather yourself, if you don't have everything yet, um, I'm gonna give you a little background on alebrijes. The word itself comes from uh, a, an artist named um, Pedro Linares. He was a, he worked in, um, it's called cartoneria and it's basically paper mache. Um, he worked making masks and piñatas and um, at the age of around 30, he became really ill and uh, had such high fever that he basically hallucinated. And in his hallucinations, he said he um, landed in this forest where he saw all these creatures that had these beautiful colors and, and maybe they were like combinations. So they had, um, maybe they had like bat wings, but they were maybe a jaguar or, you know, they were just a combination of, um, of animals. And so these creatures were kind of 
guides, like they helped him guide, or they guided him out of this forest and everything in this, like I said, everything in this forest transformed. And so um, where, when you are thinking of your alebrije, um, perhaps you want to think about it as, think of it as a spiritual guide if you'd like. Uh, what would your spiritual guide look like? What kind of colors would your spiritual guide have? Now, the most recent, um, uh, I guess, I would say reference to spiritual guides we would we have seen is probably Coco with, um, uh, I'm Pepita, I think that's her name, Peppa, Pepita, was the big lion with wings and stuff in the, uh, in the movie, um, very bright colors. That's kind of stuff we want to, the kind of things we want to think about, the kind of uh, features and a pair of creatures that we want to think about. Uh, we also want to think about patterns, lots of beautiful patterns, and not, not just created with um, shapes like dots and, and um, floral patterns, but also in, with colors. We just do repetitive colors that um, create different types of uh, patterns. So uh, we're going to start now. If you would like, like I said, you can take your um, your pencil and start to just uh, turn your figurine around, look at it, maybe think about, so for instance, mine, I have, um, can you see it okay? I know it's a little hard because it's all white, but um, it is the zebra. And I'm going to make uh, lines to define where the legs end because I'm going to paint them a different color than the rest of the body. Now, I want to show you here, I have a couple of um, examples of alebrijes. These, uh, for the most part, have one solid color underneath, and then they're painted with patterns on top um, for, the, for the body, this one is. And the horns, obviously, are different colors. It's white with um, pink and um, you know, pink ends. And this little porcupine guy, have, it's predominantly red and the, the um, spikes are blue, but it's predominantly red and then the, the uh, oh, I lost this, I lost this spike. Um, the patterns are painted on top. You can take this approach if you'd like, or in ones that I did, um, I took the, I divided the body parts. So I wanted to do the head in one color and the legs in a different color. So think about stuff like that and, um, Okay, um, and one of the things that makes alebrijes, alebrijes oh, I did not, I um, forgot to mention that the word alebrije itself comes from that dream-like state, uh, the hallucinating state that Pedro Linares was in. He said that these creatures were all saying that word, alebrije, alebrije, and so when he came back to and got better, he became Began, uh, he began making these creatures like the wind he saw in his um, hallucinations and called them alebrijes. Now the Linares family still makes alebrijes and they are trying to get the, um, they try to get the ownership, ownership of that, uh, of that name because it comes from, came from uh, Pedro Linares, but alebrijes are so embedded in the culture now that they are made throughout uh, Mexico. He's from, I believe, Mexico City uh, but some uh, places in Oaxaca, and oh, well, you know, all throughout Mexico, they make alebrijes. And I think it's Oaxaca where they make alebrijes out of one single piece of wood where they carved out, this is carved out of wood. It is not paper mache like the ones um, Pedro Linares would make. It's so much interesting stuff on, uh, on alebrijes, but that is the or origin of the word. Okay, so we're going to start, um, I'm going to start painting. I have a lot of colors here. You may not have received all of these colors. Um, that's fine. You can actually just limit yourself if you'd like to maybe two or three colors or you can get um, creative, but the brighter, the better. And you want to do use contrasting colors. So what contrasting colors mean, um, colors that are opposite each other on the uh, color wheel. So if you're using a purple, maybe you use yellow as an enhancement. Um, I'm going to cover my Luckily for my my guy, or my little zebra, there's already um, stripes in here, so I'm going to use those as part of my pattern. And I'm going to start by painting my this uh, bright teal. And this is the part. Now, 
if you run into issues where um, painting 3D is a lot more difficult than painting two dimensional because it's flat and it, you know, it doesn't move. And even though the figure is not moving, your hand is. All right, so I'm going to just paint one solid color. The, the benefits of doing this at home and at your own pace is that you can get as detailed as you would like. You don't have to, I'm gonna, you know, probably use more solid colors and, um, and less of the combination, just to make sure that I can show you a final piece by the time I'm done, but you can at home can take your time if you'd like and you can really get into um, doing different patterns. I believe that you were sent a, uh, you know, different, um, a, a PDF or something like that on different patterns that you could follow. And so you can uh, take a look at those, either print it or just take a look at it and so you can get ideas on different patterns that you can do, different color combinations. Those are always fun. So for my, so now see the white uh, spaces that I'm leaving, those are actually the stripes that, um, that were already on my zebra. And see, I just made a mistake. I want to leave the leg a different color and I painted over it. That's okay. Alrighty. Okay, so. Now, it's very important that every time you switch a color, if you're using the same brush, you dip your brush in your water, really um, wiggle it around in there and then take off the excess like so. And then you wanna dry your brush. If you don't dry your brush, you're gonna get water in your paint and then it just spreads. Okay, so I'm going to do orange. Orange and blue are complementary colors. And so this teal, this orange is really gonna pop and lip against that teal. So if you can tell, see, it's really gonna show up and we wanna do that, those nice bright colors. And this is just, oops, a little. This is just the beginning. Um, on top of this, I'm going to be adding more colors. And more patterns. So again, as you're working, I think about what, what your spirit guide would be. It would look like what kind of maybe it's using your own your favorite colors maybe it's using colors of somebody who's very close to you part of um well the reason one of the reasons why alebrijes are so related to the that is because they are again they're considered spirit guides they guide your spirit into the afterlife is what some people believe now so here we are. Okay. We have the joys of painting outside, so we can hear it all. Um, okay, so. Remember that this first layer, and again, this is um, this is going at your own going at your own pace. But this first layer is just the first layer. We're gonna build on top of this color. Now, as mentioned, I'm show you here. I um, just painted the body. This is just the, the first layer, and then I'm going to I want to paint the legs a different color. So I want those to be, I think, this really cool pink. Still, still a little wet from before, but that's okay. Part of the fun. Okay. Cool. This P 
paints that you all got are really quite fun and bright, which is what we want. As you're painting, think about ways that you can change your, your figurine. So maybe it's not entirely a zebra for me. Like I may at the bottom of their feet instead add like talon shaped. And I can do that with my pencil. Um, so I'm going to try to do it this way so that you can see from the top. Here, maybe I'll do little talon shapes. And then paint it this way. That's the nail. So that this character will now have bird feet. Once I paint it in. So see this is the front part of the thing that's gonna be nails there. And you can, these are all very cute figurines. If you wanted to make them a little, some of them had very fierce teeth, you can always include that too. Like for instance, with this, the turtle, a turtle just had a little indentation for a mouth. If you wanted to add teeth, it would just be a series of triangles coming down um, to make it more fierce if you would like. You can change that up. Changing the shape of, of, um, of the eye is also very interesting and a very good way to make things look more fierce. Most of these have circle eyes, which are ten, you know, which tend to look a little sweeter. But if you extend the eye, so say you have a circle eye here, but if you extend the eye this way, up, a little thing, it becomes a little more fierce this way. So um, you can do that. You can add the color also doesn't make so the color red is associated more to being fierce and you know dark versus um, using that something like my pink or teal or even yellow. It's more it's more relaxed. It just depends on what you are after, what kind of effect you are after. Some of them are, you know, they can be sweet, they can be a little more scary and daunting and it's really up to you. Now I'm going to continue painting the rest of my figure um, in different colors, you know, I'm going to change, choose my colors, but I'm going to paint the whole figure first before I go back and add um, pattern on top of this because I want the paint to dry. I want the paint to dry so that it doesn't blend with my other colors. I want my colors to be more solid. So I like the, the um, saturated color. And so when you um, when it gets the other when it gets um, mixed with other colors, sometimes it loses some of that, and I want it to be saturated. So I'm going to leave it. And you know what? I think I'm going to paint the whole leg and not have any stripes because I can do that. I want the stripes only to be in the body and not the legs. Make these decisions. This is your guide. This is your little person, your little uh, creature, person, little creature. So, if you were here for our last, um, the last workshop we did together, the Milagro workshop, maybe you can add your figurine to your little um, uh, Nicho Talabro. All right. Okay, so in the legs, well, you know what? I'm going to do the, the head now. In that, I'm going to do so many fun colors. You can also mix your color, so it doesn't have to be exactly out of this tube. So now I really like this um, green. So 
see what this looks like together. It's more of a brown color, which a golden color, which I'm not sure I, um, I want for the top, but this is a good color for my feet. Okay. One of the things that um, you want to consider also, I mean, another thing you want to consider also is your negative space and that clear space in between um, body parts, right? So here in the bottom of the, I mean, the front part, these are one of the convincing talents. But I have dark space or I want to have create dark space that perhaps isn't part of the, um, will be part of the figure. So I'm making, a mixing red and green to make this dark color so that maybe I can use that as almost like a block so it's a space in between where I don't want you to see. So now I have this creepy there. It's more of my, like I said, like a negative space, say. If your paint starts to, or your brush starts to drag, that just means your brush needs a little more water. So make sure you add a little more to that. Okay. All right, so um, I'm gonna hurry it up so you can actually start seeing some patterns here. Um, here we go. If you have noticed, I haven't switched brushes yet, and it's because um, I've done this painted many times, and um, I find that if I like a brush, I stick to it. But feel free to mess. Uh, Play with the other brushes that or the other brush that you've got and see the different types of marks that you get because um, certain brush, you know, depending on the size, you'll get a bigger mark um, and a smaller mark, and that can help with your the decisions on your patterns. So the thing that I want to do is incorporate some of that color that I've um, gotten. So I, I'll probably add once this dries, I'm going to add um, orange, orangey flowers into here to kind of tie in the the body to the legs. So here is, I really gravitate towards the dot pattern. I think it really looks pretty, it really enhances and it looks pretty. Um, but I'm also make sure if you decide to do this, that you're choosing a color that's going to pop on the one that you have your base color. And I'd like to do dots in different sizes. It adds more dimension, say, to the, so if you can see here, I have different dot sizes. Now, normally I would do the base color for everything before I started on pattern, but I wanted to show you a little bit of what that looks like once you start. It really does do a lot, even just a dot pattern does so much for the color underneath. So already you have a little bit of fun. If you're like me and you got some of, I got some of my teal and my pink right in here, I'm just gonna go back and paint over it again. And the pink will sit right on top. And now that it's dry, it's going to look nicer this way. Here we are. Okay, now this, um, the, the mane of the zebra, I'm gonna make it more like a mohawk for me. So I'm just gonna do, it already has stripes. So I'm gonna do different colors using those stripes. Again, with patterns, if you look at the Alevi, his are different styles. Um, a lot of them, I mean, uh, can have patterns using, again, using uh, shapes. So it's repetitive dots, circles, 
um, right, I mean, uh, di I'm sorry, um, triangles, I forgot my shapes all of a sudden. Triangles, um, there's lots of floral patterns. Floral patterns are quite prominent and quite beautiful. And uh, that's definitely something to do, or you can do just with colors. Like with here, I'm gonna just do a um, repetitive color scheme. And it's kind of be similar to what I have down here to tie in the main to the top. As I was mentioning, so right now I have a pretty tomato made. Now that I know that it's every four colors, every four stripes, I'm just going to continue four. More ideas, um, or if you need, um, if you'd like suggestions on color combinations, like I said, um, look up some of the alebrijes. You'll get to see all the beautiful dot patterns and the beautiful pat uh, just pattern work that you have um, used in alebrijes, and you'll get to you'll start to learn a lot about lots of blues and purples combined. Um, a lot of what we call or we call monochromatic um, certain areas that are monochromatic which means they're right next to the colors are right next to each other on the color wheel so you'll have different shades of blues different shades of yellow um, yellows or greens together and they look very beautiful and they work really well together Okay, you would be surprised. Um, the figurine itself is very small, but once you get to start painting, you realize how long it actually takes because you have to be careful, you have to take your time. Okay, so, so far I have my little rainbow mohawk. Here we go. Um, as I mentioned, floral patterns are very big. I am actually going to do a floral pattern in the front of the face once I'm done with doing it. For the sake of time, I'm actually probably just going to stick to blue all around except for the mouth. The teal color that I, I chose just because I don't want to take too long here. Right. It's right about now where I would really appreciate some music. It'd be really nice. Um, painting with music is always beautiful. So. Then I think. Um, I'm gonna go with some red ears here. So like I said, for the most part, the main part of the body is one color, except for the legs and the uh, legs and the ears, I'm gonna do red. Now be very careful when handling your um, your figurine because you, you are going to be painting around it. So try to, what I try to do is hold it um, from the bottom and then hold it at a spot where I haven't painted yet. So in this case, I haven't painted the ears. 
And that's where I'm going to hold so that I don't get paint everywhere. Now, I understand that for my littles, this might be a little bit hard to move, hold it around and you're going to get paint on yourself. And you know what? That's kind of fun too. Getting paint on yourself is a lot of fun. It's part of being creative and it's a creative process and just letting go and having a good time. Almost there. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can do a lot to a to um, the eyes just by changing their shape. This little um, guy has his, or its, I should say, its eyes are round and um, quite friendly, which I like. But for the sake of difference, I'm going to change its shape and make it more of a a little scarier eye. Because why not? I'm going to make sure they guide our it guides my spirit through. So I want it to look tough. So for that, I'm going to choose a darker color. You know, with the red, because as I mentioned, red. Here we go. All right. I just realized that I don't have white here. I painted a little too far in, but if you have white at home, you can also just change um, using white to fill in the eyes. You can do that too. But here, what I'm going to do is just use a different, um, I think a light color, like a yellow, which will probably add to the little scariness. Oh, I don't have yellow. I'm going to use a green. I'm going to actually let that dry for a little bit because I'm getting some glue right in there and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and paint the ears. And I also want those right. I'm getting some of my water because I'm doing a, not a good job of cleaning up my brush. Here we go. So um, some of those floral patterns can be done just by, um, I would recommend if you need a little help with drawing flowers, you could just wait till your piece dries and then just go in and draw a flower. And so you can follow your flower pattern when you're painting it. Um, and that's very simple. I can show you. We can do um, just a circle in the middle and then petals that you know, like the, like the eye shape, but they go all the way around. Or you can just do the circle ones with just, just a lot of circles. Or you can just do dot pattern. So it's one small dot and then bigger dots around it. Um, and that's kind of what I did here. So in the, in this one. Um, okay. And I'm going to do hmm. get ideas here. I got some of my 
red and my green, but that was intentional because I like that little drag color. Okay. I understand that everybody's is going to be, um, I mean, that not everybody's going to be painting the same thing that I'm painting because they're not, everybody got a zebra, but the idea is the same. You want to just look at it, turn around, see maybe the already, the indentations that are already there, for instance, this little guy here, I made a flower in the tortoise shell and then um, added another flower on its head and, um, you know, change it up in like, in terms of the colors too. Or you can um, not use them at all and just paint over it like I did on, on the legs here to just change, do a little bit of changes to your figurine. So I got this idea just by looking at it, it kind of looks like a frog. So I'm giving it a, a green, green mouth and making it into a frog. So now I have a zebra with a frog in its in front of his face. Okay, so um, to not get caught up in details and just keep going with you, I'm going to show you uh, a floral pattern on the leg here. And um, I think that I'm going to use the green still. I really like this one. It's very, it really shows up. So what I was saying is you can either do a dot pattern, which is this small dot, and then bigger ones. I have some water in here. Bigger dots all around it. There's one, or you could do um, petals. And if you drag your brush top to bottom, you get this really cool petal like. And just leave the center open, and you'll just put a dot with another color that, that will be your. Um, just in the center of your flower. Ah. I'm here for the sake of just showing you. Here's the, the same one again. Dot, and then bigger dots around it. Oh, I need this guy. Okay. Now in the, here. I think the hardest thing about doing this is knowing when you're done and when you're added too much. So um, it's a lot of fun to just get creative, think about how you can, what you can do to make it different, um, what you can do to make it stand out. See, I added red stripes to my, um, red vertical stripes to my or my orange stripes and already that has changed a lot. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so um, time wise, where are we? Okay, 
Well, we have about, I don't want to take too much of your time, but I do want to show you that it really starts to come together once you start adding these patterns and using the same, so a similar color scheme. And here for the most part, I'm using these five different colors. Yeah, five different colors um, of the ones that I had here. You don't have to use all five or um, four of the colors that you have. You could really just do two or three and, and mix them and um, still keep the same color scheme. If you get too, if you go too overboard with colors, sometimes it's hard to tie them in together. Okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finish down here so that we can have a finished. This, what you see me doing, is just me wiping off my brush because I had too much water in it. And I know that I have too much water when my, when my paint gets runny. And if you're, again, it's the opposite. If your paint starts to drag, like you'll see little drag um, marks, it's because you don't have enough, either enough paint or not enough water. Let's try, so I'm gonna have to mix new one of the dark color. So, you know, if you are interested in making a dark color and you don't have one, um, what I just did here, combining um, or mixing complementary colors also really darkens it, darkens them. So right here, what I made this dark color is just by mixing green and red together. Okay, well, I am almost done here. I'm going to continue working on my figuring and adding more pattern, I might um, decide to go back. Sometimes they need a second coat of paint, um, but I don't want to keep you here for all of that while I'm adding a second coat of paint because uh, some paint is more transparent than other paint. So you have some paint that is um, like your oranges that you can see through them a little more than maybe per se your dark green. And so for your light colors, you'll need to, uh, you might need to go over it again and that's okay because you have enough of that, enough paint, and then you can clean it up too. Again, I'm gonna let my red dry before I go back in. That's gonna take a little bit more time, but for the most part, it looks kind of cool.
Okay, the last thing I'm going to do before I close off with you all is just do a little bit more of that dot pattern and tell you all right, right in the nose. I'm going to let this, uh, these eyes dry before I go back in there again, but see, for the most part, we have transformed our figurine into something else. Um, you just mainly using colors and patterns. And although we don't have we need to do too much with changing, maybe adding antenna and stuff. It is really just adding colors and adding patterns changes your figurine. And now you have your very own spirit guide. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you have fun um, playing with color, decorating your spirit guide, making your own alebrije. Uh, and like I said, if you joined us for the last one, you, perhaps you can add it to your, um, your Milagro box. Thank you again for joining us and I will see you next time.